Welcome back to the Woodworks. Um, today is special guest day. Very, very special guest today is uh, one of my bandmates, Mr. Joe Mack. Been friends with him for over 35 years. Had some amazing times with him. He's super talented. I'm a fan of Joe's. So I wanted to have him on the show and talk about his, you know, his life growing up in Jamaica Plain with a big family and what they would eat. And we'll talk about some new kid stuff too. So here he is, Mr. Joe Mack. Thanks for being on here, Joe, coming on the Woodworks. Um, yeah. I want I want to kind of focus on first, um, like you, you come from a big family, nine kids. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of McIntyres. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was thinking, I'm like, what was maybe on a holiday or when you were all together, what was like a typical meal your mom would make to feed all you guys? Yeah, she, um, yeah, she had to make nine of everything, man. It was crazy. Um, and and she she loved it, you know, but she did it her way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we joke a lot. There wasn't a lot of moisture in 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 my mom's cooking. So, like, there wasn't there wasn't too much TLC because she was too busy doing everything else in the house, too. So she wasn't checking on the pork chops, you know, every second, you know. So they would get dry, you know, fried chicken was dry, you know, just just like, that's why I, I remember when I met you guys and we would go to like Kentucky Fried Chicken and I'd be like, I, I wouldn't know what it was. It was like, what is this, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty simple, you know. It was, uh, she would make, you know, you, you talk about like, quick ideas she would make um like corned beef hash right she'd make a corned beef right or, or a pot roast actually she mm -hmm. do roast beef hash too like the next day or a couple of days after and one time she had roast beef and she didn't have any potatoes so she took frozen french fries out of the freezer mm -hmm. and we had this old like 100 year old grinder that you attach to the um kitchen table and you just put a bowl under it and, and she just she ground she made it out of french fries and she never she never went back so i guess she had to think on her on her toes a lot yeah I, some of the things you're saying is similar to my mom because you know she was a great baker but not really a great cook so i already had told the story about her drying out the pork chops <laughs> like she always dried out the pork oh my honestly God. Even the turkey, you know, you had to slap the gravy on there because it kind of got dried out a little bit. Yeah. So very, very similar um, kind of things with, with big families. It goes yeah. that way sometimes. Yeah. So when you're sitting down to dinner, everyone's there, all of you. Who, like, <laughs> your family's full of performers, you know, talented yeah. people. Yeah. So who's the most talented person in your family? Who's the most talented? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, you know, I'm gonna get in trouble. You want me to get in trouble? You're talking about my no. nine siblings back in the day, you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We so, all young. Um, you know, I think of my sister Susan because first of all, she was a smart she was one of the smart ones. She got the heck out of Boston like as soon as she <laughs> <laughs> well, not right away, but she lives in Florida, close to you in St. Pete. Yeah. And um, the reason why I say she's talented, she always had a good job. She worked at the Hancock building, you know, at the, at the tower downtown in Boston. And she's been, you know, working her whole life, but also, you know, sort of a social worker working for, you know, places like the United Way. And I just tweeted something about one of her causes now and. Um, but she can also sing. She has a really nice voice and she doesn't yes. sing, you know, professionally or, but she loves to sing. And I always like the sound of her voice. So combination wise, I mean, you're right. We do have a lot of talent in our family in different ways, but, uh, I'm going to go with Susan. All right. And then, so who's the comedian at the t dinner table? You know, Tommy's the driest. Tommy has the driest sense of humor. 
He's really funny and he's sort of a tough audience too. So, but when he, you say something funny, he's really going to give it up to you. So like his bar is very high and, um, yeah. you know, he, he, you know, again, he's kind of dry. Uh, I would say he might be the funniest, but my sister Carol is also a probably, you know, the most, most kind of performer next to me. Like mm. the, the two of us perform the most and she loves to make people laugh and kind of entertain and, and make fun. You see, for, you know, I don't obviously know everyone in your family, but for me, yeah. like I always say, like, even when me and Donnie were young, he's been making me laugh my whole life. But then when yeah. I meet you, you come in the group, there's another sense of humor that comes in and you've been making yeah. me laugh ever since the day I met you. And it's one of the great things about being in the group. And a lot of people don't know, like, each guy is kind of funny in their own way. It's like Jordan will say something straight to the point and have us all laughing. But then you come in with like the clever one-liner zingers. Well, yeah, I mean, what Jordan, I, I steal a lot of Jordan's material because he's he'll say it <laughs> under his breath, like you say. Like he'll say, <laughs> say something real funny and then I'll end, end up saying it in an interview or backstage and it becomes like a joke, but it was really Jordan. Yeah. Um, but you <laughs> see, you lay back, you lay back because you're like, there's too many clowns in this group. I gotta, I can't, I can't get in there. But when you <laughs> want to be funny, dude, you are funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> it is, you know, it's five of us. So, you know, it's tough to get in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, we're doing yeah. interviews all day long and I'm just, this is me the whole day. Just <laughs> nothing. The whole time an answer the question or nothing. Yeah. It's tough. So coming from that big family, what are some of the traditions you've taken from your family? And then now being a, a dad married with three kids, yeah. what are you, what, what kind of traditions, if you didn't take them from your family, like what do you guys do? Yeah. Um, well, you know, my mom, my mom made a meatloaf, but again, it wasn't like fluffy and it didn't rise up high. It looked like brownies. I swear to God, bro. Her meatloaf <laughs> looked like brownies. And that you, you get used to it. So now, like, you know, you like the crusty parts. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you grew up on that. You want that little crusty part. So um, we try to, we send that around every once in a while, <laughs> that, that recipe. Um, you know, I, that being said, I didn't know what like Thanksgiving could be until I married a, a Jewish girl mm -hmm. and they, I mean, I don't know where she got her, her sweet potato pie recipe. I don't know if it was from her Jewish side or her dad's side, or I think she got it when they, when, when. When Barrett was little, they lived in Texas for a little while. Mm -hmm. So I think it had some Southern soul to it <laughs> and they got it from a neighbor. But dude, her, her sweet potato pie is, is amazing. Maybe the next time I'm back, you'll make the sweet potato pie. It's, it's yeah. unbelievable. But they do, they do uh, inside out um, uh, baked potatoes. You know, they mm. take it out, they make, you know, mashed potatoes, put it back in, put cheese and bacon. They go all out, you know, again, nine kids back in the day you mm -hmm. you had you had a baked potato a piece of turkey and maybe some green beans you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. and it was a wrap you know what i mean yeah, that, was, that was it so um tradition wise you know it was it was all about just being in the kitchen and you know having a few laughs and dancing and putting the radio on and you know mm. that that was the uh and then, you know, it was just a matter of time before someone said something to, you know, piss someone <laughs> off. And then it was everybody ran for the hills. But um, but yeah, we had a lot of good times. All right. So then, you, you know, you're, you're growing up in the house with all them kids and you 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 meet the new you meet the non nuke, the nuke, the four other new yeah. kids. Yeah. And so we hit the road with Tiffany. What yeah. was like out on the road that first time around? What was like your go to spot you know that you know that you eat oh man you know 
you know, back in the day, if you were able to go to McDonald's, you know what I mean? With five bucks, you know, that was like everything, you know? So yeah. to just, <laughs> to just like, to do that was like everything. Um, man, I'm trying to think like Waffle House wasn't that, wasn't mm. that early. We weren't yeah. into it. I'm sure they were around, but, um, you know, man, just I think of peanut butter sandwiches on the on the bus, on the tour bus, you know, having like, uh, you know, on the rider, having having a dressing room with with all the fixings and like cereal and all this stuff that we'd never seen before. That was just like it was like we were like kids in a in a candy store, literally. So, um, yeah, I was just I mean. To know you could go to McDonald's like as many times as you want was pretty awesome. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So now, you know, we're, we're grown men now and I see every guy in the group kind of has different tastes with, you know, the kind of food they like. And I kind of view like you and Donnie seem kind of like foodies to me. Like you guys get really enthusiastic about a place yeah. you love and you'll like say, no, we got to go here. We got to go here. And you'll we'll all end up at the place. So yeah. Where did that kind of develop, like the the love of like not so much McDonald's, but like the finer right. cuisine? Um, well, you know, my dad, by the time I came along, nine kids, my dad had, you know, a, a, a pretty good union job. You know what I mean? He was like vice president of the Bricklayers Union. And, you know, by most standards, he wasn't, you know, he was no millionaire or no yeah. whatever. But like, you know, we could go to. There's Amrines in South Boston. That was a, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't a fancy restaurant, but like, you know, it was like, um, remember the Red Coach Grill? <laughs> <laughs> that was like fancy back in the day. It was like, you know, it, you know, fancy when you're working class, like fancy is not what fancy is now, you know? Yeah. It was, it was, you know, what was fun for us was more along the lines of, maybe a, a little bit better than an olive garden or something like that. That was a big deal, you know? Um, you know, I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I like going out, you know what I mean? I, I, you know, to me again, it, it, the fact that we were so young and we had some money and we could take our friends out to dinner, you know, that was really as, as good as it gets, you know? So, um, you know, it was just a matter of like where where's the next steak coming from? Let's go get another yeah. steak, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you said when you said Amrods in my family, the Wood family, it was the Hilltop Steakhouse in Saugus. Right. right. That's it. Well, when I said Red Coach Grill, I meant Hilltop. Yeah. That was that was big time. Big time. That was like that was that was like, you know, like, you know, special occasion, like proms and you know something was happening you know that wasn't the, like had the yeah. fake cows outside of the outside of the amazing <laughs> yeah amazing yeah so like now because you know i try to with my kids i try to balance between like we when we celebrate in something or it's a special occasion we go obviously to a nice restaurant but like when you're home and you're ordering food at home like from different restaurants especially now like yeah. what's What's like your family's kind of cuisine that they kind of gravitate towards? Uh, you know, we, we're we pretty good like eaters as far as like variety. Like my son Reese will eat anything. Um, mm -hmm. Kira's got sort of my palate. She'll try stuff and she'll be into it. Um, Griffin is a little bit more like pasta and burgers, you know? Yeah. He'll try a little something. Um, there is, um, I mean, there are a lot of places in, in New York. Um, mm. there's, a, um, there's a place called Maison Pickles. And we've been recently going to that for takeout. And, and that's fancy, you know, that's mm. like, you know, they'll do a, like, a, like a fried artichoke, like really mm. well done. Like, it's yeah. simple, but you know, you know the place is good when the when the when there's not a lot to it, but it yeah. it tastes really good. Yeah. Uh, that being said, they do like French dips, 
three mm-hmm. different kinds of French dips with the, the you know, the prime rib meat and the, you know, the, the nice sauces and the comfort food kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, we love our Chipotle too, you know. Chipotle is <laughs> dope because because it's healthy you know what i mean yeah, like it yeah, is mexican yeah. and it's yummy but it's healthy my kids i've been no i noticed that you know the last couple of days it's like thankfully they, they kind of know like when to say when you know what i mean mm-hmm. they, they have like because that being said like you go to bed the pantry doesn't have a lock on it you know what i'm yeah, saying like true. so it's just like you know and you know, you can't really blame a 10 year old for like, you know, sneaking into the pantry at like 11 o'clock at night. So there's a little bit of that, but, um, but I'm, I'm glad they have a pretty good, you know, Griffin could eat a few more vegetables, but other than that, we're, we're pretty good. So in your house, who cooks? You or Barrett? Uh, Barrett, you know, Barrett definitely, you know, is, is always, you know, taking care of the kids and the family, you know, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, that being said, and I know a lot of families have done this during the pandemic, my, my son Griffin and Reese, the both of them love cooking. So they'll, you know, they'll find, you know, they did like Popeye's chicken sandwich. They got the recipe yeah. and they, they did the Popeye's fried chicken sandwich. Um, they did different kinds of burgers. Um, they do different kind of pastas. Griffin, like, baked bread, like, these yeah. brioche buns because we didn't have any. He's like, let's bake them. You know what I mean? So, like, and I'm blown away because they're, you know, 11 and 13, and I didn't even think to do that. You got to have patience, and I'm really grateful because, you know, in this age with so many screens, they're always on the screens, and it's, yeah. especially now, it's hard, and you you want them to be well-rounded. And so for them to be in the kitchen, it's like a break, you know, and they're like really into it. And like, what's more, I mean, obviously you're, it, you got a show about it, but it's like, yeah. you know, food and being in the kitchen is really important and it's a break from, from everything else. So I'm glad they're, they're into that. Yeah. And one of the things I've been saying on the show is that I'm, you know, it pays off in the long run. Cause you should see Daniel now, Daniel, from watching me and cooking with me when he was young like them, he's just cooking all the time. So most of the week I don't have to cook cause he's cooking and he's in some things better than me. And then, you know, just as good and everything else. He's, I'm really, yeah. really proud of him, especially now him being a dad. And, you know, he's really taken a lot of pride in trying new things. And he's kind of got me to branch out a little bit and not stick with the staple things I'm good with right. and whatever. So, it, the, you gotta stay ahead run, of him. You yeah. gotta stay ahead. You don't want him laughing you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But in the long run, your kids are gonna they're gonna be able to cook on their own. You know what I mean? Totally. Totally. Yeah. Reese is really um I mean he can do it on his own too, but like he's really he's like an amazing like helper, like you know, some like <laughs> you know, me and Griffin try to do something we're arguing like the first minute, you know, but like <laughs> Reese is like so patient and like, mm. you know, he, he helps out and he, you know, he'll be taking care of stuff and, you know, chopping the fruit or getting things together. And um, so they work well together, Griffin and Reese in the kitchen. It's cool. So do you cook with the, do you cook with the boys? Not really. I mean, my my big. My big thing is my fancy uh, grilled ham and cheese, which is not not much. But, you know, I make it. It started with it was it's always um, Christmas Eve. So, nice. you know, in front of the fire and I make, you know, I make a bunch of them. And it always has to be with uh, raisin challah bread and three different cheeses. You know, I'll take like I get three different like some some not always some one of them is probably you know, American or cheddar, but then the other ones are like fancy, like, you know, Gruyere or Gouda or something. Mm. The ones that you monster, ones that kind of go together and um, you don't want to cancel them out. And then the ham, sometimes it's like from the deli. Sometimes it's like thick, like a baked ham. Mm. I try to mix it up. You got the Cape Cod potato chips. You got to get the bread and butter uh, uh, pickles, pickles. The chips. 
And um, yeah, so that's kind of my jam. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really do do my jobs, man. It's Joe pretty, Matt. Pretty bad. Okay, so I'm a one hit wonder in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. So where where did this recipe come from? So that is my mother's recipe for Irish bread. Yeah. Does it say Irish soda bread or Irish bread? Just Irish bread. Irish bread. So that was sent to me from my sister Susan. So can I see that one more time? Because I sent yeah. that to you. And yeah, it looks. Yeah. Okay. It definitely looks like she, uh, Susan, typed it out. Because my. So mom this wasn't her, your mom that typed it, and Susan that. That's typed not. It. No. 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 My my mom probably just would have wrote it out, and um, and. So, yeah, that was, you know, that was one of her jams, too, I guess. You know, my mother was funny in, in a lot of ways, but she said, you know, <laughs> she said, we're not Irish, we're American. You know, she'd say we were American, you know, because she didn't want to be, you know, associated with the riffraff. You know what I mean? She thought yeah. she was fancier than all the other Boston Irish Catholics. You know what I mean? So she'd say, we're American, but obviously we're Irish and her family was Irish and we... We uh, we we did a few things, you know. She, I probably the, the 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 two big things that we did for that made us, you know, showed our Irish heritage was Irish step dancing. A bunch mm -hmm. of my sisters did that, and then my mother did it later on in her life, and she loved it. And then um, the Irish bread, and it's really good. I mean, uh, you know, you probably need a little butter because it's you know. It's on the dry, it's on the boring side, but you know, nice, fresh, warm Irish bread with some nice butter, and uh, you're good, you're good to go, right? See, I, I'm familiar with uh, Irish brown bread, which is made with buttermilk, and it's kind of actually healthy bread. That down the street, the Green Hill Bakery from where I lived was yeah. an Irish bakery, and they would make it there. I mean, it's my my family brings it to me when we're on the road. They bring me like two loaves of it. So what I oh found, my. I was like, "Is this?" And I was like, "No, this is something different." But it has yes. shortening in it. Do you know what shortening is? What What is it made out of? No, no, I've I've had to use it because my mom's recipes have shortening. Some of them have shortening in it. It's just, it, I mean, it's white. It's it's gross, dude. You don't even know what it is. It's just white. And, but our families, that was normal. It wasn't butter or margarine. It was shortening. Oh, I got to make a pie crust. Shortening. Everything was shortening. shortening. Yeah. And it's and, but this calls for it melted. So four tablespoons. It took me three minutes to melt four tablespoons in the microwave. Oh, my God. <laughs> and and, and uh, my sister said you had to double sift it or something like that. Sift yeah, it twice. Yeah. Yeah, I have a good sifter. I, I, I'll sift it once, probably. I mean, okay. You know, but okay. I mean, maybe I'll do it twice, but yeah. Yeah. yeah now, it says it. the brown bread, though, and you're right. My family loved brown bread. I was never a fan. But what is it? Will, will you have it with coffee or will you have it in the morning? And yeah, that was it, it, it's definitely not a sandwich bread at all. And it, yeah. but it's also not a sweet bread, but it, it, it is more of a morning thing. I've never liked probably had it at night usually yeah. i get up in the morning on the bus and it's there for my family bring it and i'll have a couple slices right. yeah yeah, but yeah the twist to it is that it's it's made with buttermilk so that kind of gives it that tang yeah it's yeah, like yeah. Bread. the funny thing about this recipe is there's one line that says don't beat it do not beat do not beat and i was like don't beat it. <laughs> do not I, beat. I got to mix it. You know, I got to, with my mixer, but like, what is it? Do not beat. I mean, you know, it's funny you say that. It's almost like, I think that might be connected with a, like an automatic mixer. Mm -hmm. So maybe that means do it by hand or don't beat it you know what i mean like i, <laughs> I took it as don't over mix it don't over mix, don't over mix it right yeah. right 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 don't it just, beat it it just says do not beat oh my gosh <laughs> do not beat 
right. So in closing, Joe, in closing. Uh, you know, I have this, you know, this, I just want to know if you had one meal. Oh man. And you were going to die tomorrow. What would be your last meal? Damn it. Um, I know the side would have to be my 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 wife's uh, sweet potato pie. That the, and, yeah, that's the side. Oh man! Must be amazing if that's your your last meal. I know sweet it's potato. really good. You know what? You know you always think, oh, I'll have a steak or this or that. I'd probably have a nice piece of scrod from the Cape. <laughs> little Cape Cod scrod, bro. You, a little broiled scrod, nice white and fluffy. Some some sweet potato pie on the casserole on the side. And I don't uh, know, man. I don't know if the fish good. goes with the sweet potato pie so good, man. I don't know. I don't know because I was thinking, you know, sometimes you have like the butternut squash on the side or something like that. Yeah. So my my wife's is a little bit more casserole-y, that kind of a thing. Like it's mm. you know. I think you do beat it. I think she does beat her. <laughs> she beats her her uh, sweet potatoes pies. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's a that's a. Yeah. That wasn't I was picturing steak. I was picturing. I was thinking steak, steak too, night. but like I don't know. I just you know, you know, I want to go off into the sunset, nice and light and feeling good. You know, not too heavy. Nope. Float away, just float do you, away. Do you have one? Did you already? Did 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 you have to? No, pick that, one these are my you? questions. These are my exactly. questions for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I asked the question. Yeah, it's you know, it's kind of the closing. What would be your last meal? Good, good, good. All right, well, man. Hopefully, I'll have a million of them, and uh, I look forward to uh, having a few after the show. Right, and so right now, I'm gonna get to bacon the bread. Yeah. So when I'm what I mean by after the show is after our show when we get back out on the road, God willing, soon enough. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it. I'll send you okay. a picture when I'm done. Great. And I'm I'm really thankful that you came on here and did this. Um, hey, thanks for having it. me. Uh, I, I I love I love the show and love uh, love watching you having fun and spreading the love. And uh, listen, if you want to throw like a little, I don't know. A little more moisture in the the Irish bread. Go for it, okay? A little butter, a little butter on yeah, there. A little butter, yeah. I won't be offended. <laughs> All right, man. Um, thank, All right, thank dude. You. I love you. I'll see you love soon. Love you, man. Love the fam. All right. All right, same same over there. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, just got off the Zoom call with Joe Mack, which was great. To see him and talk to him, I miss him. And I have his mom's recipe, the Irish bread. I'm familiar with making Irish brown bread, which is kind of a healthy-ish bread that you make with buttermilk. This is completely different. Let me run down the list of ingredients. Three cups of flour, four and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons salt, four tablespoons of melted shortening, one cup of raisins, one beaten egg, one and a half cups milk, and a half a cup of sugar. So I didn't have raisins, but I have like this dried fruit medley which has raisins in it. I eat it as a snack, so it's gonna be great. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sift the dry ingredients. I'm gonna put my salt in there, bacon powder. This is Joe's mom, Mrs. Max recipe. So I'm focused want to do it justice. She's a pretty uh, amazing woman. Um, having nine kids is amazing in itself. A lot of McIntyres out there. Okay, so now I'm gonna sift the flour. And you guys know this is one of my favorite things. Uh, this is close to snow as we get in Miami. Uh, look at this. <clears throat> My sifter. So wonderful. Trusty sifter. Let's get the rest in there. Yeah. 
We got all the dry ingredients in there. Set that all to the side. I have to beat the egg. It's at a beaten egg, so we gotta beat. And usually for me, when it's one egg, a fork works the best to kind of beat it up. You would need like a super small whisk. Okay, got a beaten egg there. So I kind of got everything in line, and now I'm gonna follow the directions to the tea. The gross part of this is the shortening, which my mom used to, but this is the liquid, so I had to uh, microwave it, and that was a little bit of an adventure, because it didn't take like 30 seconds. It took like three minutes to melt down, what was it, uh, four tablespoons of shortening. I mean, it's gross, man, but okay. Moving on, moving past the shortening. So, I sifted the flour. Um, it says to add, Okay, I'm gonna get this in the mixer because I think that's what this is saying. So we're gonna put the dry ingredients in the mixer. Done. Gonna add the raisins. And I'm just gonna give that a little mix to kind of incorporate the raisins. And apparently, I had raisins, but Rose ate all the raisins, so there you have it. So this says combine egg, milk, and the slightly cooled shortening. I mean, it, this is a very short <laughs> description, so I'm just gonna kinda, I guess just get them in the bowl, right? Yep. And I have my trusty little whisk, which this was my mother's, so I always keep it close. So I'm gonna put the milk in with the egg. I think this is just a safe way to do it, just in case, instead of just dumping it all in the bowl with the dry ingredients. And then I'm gonna whisk this in, because I have no clue what the deal is with this shortening. <clears throat> just the thought of it, man. Ugh. All right, because this is the shortening's doing all kind of weird stuff in here. So let's get it in the bowl. Okay, let's give it a mix. Okay, so I purposely do not want to over mix this. I'm gonna use the spatula to kind of give it a final mix. Just cause that's what it says. It says don't beat. I mean, what does that even look like? <laughs> Don't beat it up like... <laughs> and I'm sure this recipe um, is from a long time ago. Because it look, doesn't it look like it was typed? Like yeah. on this index card. Joe sent me a picture of the index card, which is typical back then. Like my mom had all her recipes on index cards. So pretty cool to now I have a copy of Joe's mom's recipe. Joe's parents are pretty, you know, always been pretty special people in my life. You know, we were all one big family. Out there on the road the first time around. So, this is gonna, you know, I'm gonna take a lot of pride in making this. Okay, so it looks, I guess like it's supposed to look. It's gonna go into this pan, loaf pan. This, this is like a nine by five loaf pan. I have a couple of these. And you're gonna want your oven set to 350. And this is gonna bake for an hour it says. But obviously I'm gonna be careful, I'm gonna watch it, I'm not gonna leave the kitchen because if it's ready before, you know, I'll take a toothpick and put it in there and check it out but I am not gonna overbake this. <clears throat> no way. That's a sin. Joe Max Mom's Irish bread. If I overbaked it, I'd wanna punch myself in the face. I, have to, I do the whole thing all over again. I just get right back to it and melt that damn shortening again. <laughs> damn melted shortening. <laughs> it's so crazy, man. Cause our parents back then, 
they weren't like thinking what what is this? shortening was normal. It was like having butter in your fridge. It was just like a normal. You're gonna make some fried chicken. Get the shortening. It's gross, man. It's just this white substance. Sorry, I don't. You no, know, I go on rants about things, but like shortening is gross. And this is like the second or third time I'm using it. Okay, so there it is. I uh, greased the pan beforehand with some butter. It's ready to go. 350, it's gonna bake in the oven for an hour, but I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna check on it probably with 20 minutes left. And you know, it's right there. I'm gonna be downstairs keeping my eye on Mrs. Max Irish bread into the oven. Miss McIntyre's Irish bread is ready. Gonna take it out the oven. It looks fantastic. I mean, look at that. I mean, that looks like it should be in a bakery. Can't wait to try it. Gonna let it cool off and then gonna give it a taste. Be right back. Talked to Joe Mac earlier. This is his mom's Irish bread. It was a lot of fun making it. Very different recipe for me. I'm gonna give it a taste. He was telling me maybe put some butter on it. But you know, I gotta, I gotta just try it as it is. Oh. What? Oh That's no, nice. hold on. This I'm not Joe Mac. <laughs> this is really good. Yeah. It's not overly sweet, but like all the edges have that nice crunch. Not the dry crunch, like if you over bake something, Oh, wow. No, this is... The way you make it sweet, it's good. Oh. Chance likes it, and she doesn't even like raisins. I do like raisins. You do like raisins? <laughs> it's an odd thing to like. I yeah, no, it's weird. I thought you didn't like raisins. I do. Hold on. I just gotta say, this is surprisingly delicious. Now, it's not... I don't... I'm not a sweets guy. So, for me, Un, you know, not being so sweet is a good thing. But the edges are just fantastic. And it's moist. It's not dry at all. So I don't know what Joe was talking about. Sorry, Joe, but... <clears throat> I did take it out the oven on the early side because I kind of was eyeballing it. And I, you know, pushed it a little. And for me, it was done. So I think maybe 10 minutes earlier. So the recipe says an hour. 45, 50 minutes, I would say, is where it's at. But man, this is super moist. It's really fantastic, enjoyable. man. Wow. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Mrs. McIntyre up above. I know you're up there with my mom talking about all of us. But anyway, this is fantastic. Mrs. Max Irish bread. Try it at home. I'm telling you, it's delicious. Wow. Man, he undersold it. He Man, literally dry. made it sound. Yeah, I know. It's not dry and it tastes great. See, sometimes when you make banana bread, it's too much banana. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. like you're eating a banana. This has that little fruit in it, flavor. How is it, Chance? It's good. Yeah. The crust. <laughs> but you're not typically thinking about the crust on a yeah. on a like a loaf like this. Right. So good, man. Hmm. I have to text him, dude, you were wrong. Yeah. Was not dry. Fantastic.